You know, if you're really into adventure, you know, and exploring Wisconsin, storm chasing is a great thing to do because you're going to see cities and towns you've never seen before. You wouldn't have, you know, no reason to ever be there, but because the weather and nature, you know, led you through this path, you get to see it. And that's one of the things I enjoy the most. Hello again, and welcome back to another episode of Wisconsin's Outdoor Explorer podcast. I am your host, Jason. It is the 4th of July week, and that means most people will be looking to the skies and ooing and eyeing over their favorite fireworks. But one person in Wisconsin is going to be looking at the skies for a completely different reason. Justin Publon is a storm chaser from the Oshkosh area who also runs the website Wisconsin Weather. Justin has observed over 250 thunderstorms since 2009 and he has also witnessed some historic tornado events such as the Rochelle EF4 tornado in 2015 and the Shatek EF3 tornado in 2017. Justin is passionate about storm chasing. He's not afraid to travel where the storm is going. He's got a lot of experience chasing storms and honestly it's one of those things that I've always been fascinated with. Even as a little kid, I'll admit when I was a little kid, I was kind of afraid of thunderstorms and lightning like most of us. But as I got older, that fear turned into a fascination. And as I moved more into photography, I started looking at storms in a whole new way. And soon I was outside as the storm was approaching with a camera trying to catch lightning clips and those those cool shelf clouds that come through. So a part of me has always wanted to be a storm chaser and go out there and, and and get it, get myself right in the mix where you can really get some really cool video and some really cool cool, um, pictures of storms. So I really was looking forward to talking with Justin about storm chasing in Wisconsin. So I really hope you enjoy this interview with Justin Publon from Wisconsin weather. Joining me today is Justin Publon with Wisconsin Weather. Today we're going to talk about anything from storm chasing to weather watching to spotting. Anything that you can think of weather, we're going to talk about that today. So welcome to the podcast, Justin. Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm happy to be here. So when did your fascination with weather begin? Well, I've always sort of been fascinated by weather ever since I can remember. I think, you know, looking back, every memory that I have involves weather some way. You know, seeing sitting out in my parents, in, my, in our family field, watching storm clouds roll over. But I would say that there's probably two events in my life that really pushed me towards, you know, where I am today. And that would be the 1996 Oakfield F5 tornado, which, um, you know, is the last F5 in Wisconsin. And going to see that damage path and, you know, the town of Oakfield getting just totally destroyed and just being part of that whole process and experience, seeing that with my own eyes was really powerful. And that was coincident with the movie Twister, you know, where, where you're seeing, you know, tornadoes in this movie Twister take on a personality that was so almost evil, like a, like an escalating evil personality. And and then, you know, at a young age, feeling like this could happen to anybody, you know, tornadoes are evil kind of thing and being afraid. So I was always afraid and always paying attention to it. And then in 2000, there was a massive windstorm in Oshkosh. Everybody knows about it and everybody remembers it. We were in our house and I could just feel the gushes of wind hitting. And, you know, it was almost like a wave on the, on the water, kind of like, and they would relax a bit. And then each gust would be increasing in strength. And I would just sit there, you know, with my hands on, on the armrest, just clenching, just hoping, like feeling like I was going to get blown away at each at each gust, you know. Feeling a part of that, you know, really helps you relate to people in the worst of storms and you know like yeah i know exactly how you feel like you're going to be blown off the earth at any moment but um in in that moment too a tree started leaning towards our house and i was paralyzed watching it fall and i saw it right through the window coming out the house and and my parents had to yank me into the basement um thankfully everyone was fine the house was okay but that type of stuff like i can relate to so as i went through life there was always things that stuck out you know, being on the lake and watching the storm kind of come over the top, being part in severe thunderstorm warning, seeing the black skies, all that stuff just sticks out in my mind. Yeah, I, I think we all, I think we all can relate a little bit as little kids. You know, being afraid 
of storms. I, I remember myself as a little kid, you know, you'd hear them thunderstorms go through in the middle of the night and you would just kind of tuck yourself underneath your blanket. So where, where at what point did you kind of overcome that that didn't bother you as much? You know, I think as I kind of worked into like middle school age and high school age, it, it I stopped being afraid of it. You know, the storms of early 2000s around my area were pretty bad. And then it seemed like after that, things kind of mellowed out a little bit and it just became less of an issue, you know, and things just, so, you know, and it was maybe a little bit of getting used to it because there were storms, you know, and it's sort of like, yeah, you know, an F5 tornado could happen at any place, any time kind of thing, but probably not going to be today, you know, so I kind of got over the whole fear progressively. And then, and then I think in high school, that fear really transitioned into the, I'm interested in this now. Um, this is fascinating, and I just want to learn more. I'm naturally drawn to it. Yeah, I, I kind of follow that same path, and and for me, it was more based into like photography. I, I've always been, you know, really into photography. So being able to capture a storm, you know, with a picture or something like that was something that really started piquing my interest about that same time. Um, what were some of the things that that you got into that really helped you start following storms? Uh, well, you know, it's kind of an interesting interesting situation for me because. You know, when I was in high school, I was more along the meteorology route of, you know, I should go to school and um, I should, you know, maybe become a TV guy or, you know, work at the National Weather Service or do a private sector job, you know, something where, you know, I'm sort of behind the scenes working to, you know, help everyone. And that was sort of what I was going for. But then, you know, in this moment in high school and the storms just, it wasn't like, like I said before, it wasn't as much of an issue where it was, it was almost like, yeah, the storms were there, but they were just not a threat. Um, and it just wasn't a thing at that point. But as I got to be out of – when I graduated, so I graduated in 2009, um, really when my interest was peaking, there's some things going on in my life that kind of drove me to pursue storm chasing. One of the things was, you know, storm chasing specifically where it started was I recognized that if I really wanted to see these storms and kind of relive the things that I'd seen in my childhood and understand them and appreciate them, like, I, I had to go find the storm. I wasn't going to get it just sitting in my backyard waiting. You know, there was there was no chance. So I knew that I had to get out there and go find what I wanted. And that's where I started storm chasing. There was one day there in, in July 2009 that drove me in that path. Tell me about that storm. So in 2009, you know, I had, you know get, we talk about getting into storm chasing and stuff like that. For me, it was I had done all the research. And but there's still no replacement for actually getting your hands dirty and going into it. But, you know, I, I kind of watched all the YouTube videos and I did all the understood the, the dynamics of supercell thunderstorms and uh, convective thunderstorms. And I, I felt like I knew what I was doing. What happened? I got pushed out because things were like very stressful in my life. And I was just like this one day I saw a severe thunderstorm warning pop out. And I'm like, OK, I, I'm going to go for it. I don't care what happens. I, I don't care if, you know, it's like, I'm just going to go because there's nothing else that's keeping me here, you know. Yeah. Um, and I went out there and I saw the storm and the storm was the most ma- amazing, beautiful thing I've ever seen. Um, even to this day, every storm I see doesn't compare to this storm that I saw. Um, it was, I think it was July 27th, 2009. Things seemed to work out and then you, know, you go there and and um, what happened was the storm kind of approached slowly, but, but it, it was very impressive and as it came over me, being that I hadn't really understood storms totally, I hadn't been experienced, I hadn't been exposed to, you know, being underneath a massive thunderstorm, uh, I kind of, the situation overwhelmed me. And, you know, I went through this process of, you know, being in fear again of, oh man, what if the tornado hits me? What if I get hit by hail? So I, you know, what if I get blown over kind of thing? So that was how I broke myself into it. Then you went to school, and then did you do some chasing while you were in college? While I was in college, I graduated in 2013. I graduated from University of Wisconsin, Oshkosh, with a geology degree. But that's a bachelor's of science. So it's technically I'm a scientist. So I I was understanding weather also from a paleoclimate. So I kind of understand how the Earth goes through these cycles of really long, unfathomable amounts of history, you know, millions and millions of years. I got that perspective, but it was always part of me that was trying to get back to the weather. And, all, you know, I was taking all the all the classes that had to do with weather in college. I was taking them. Anything that was relating to that, that's what I was going for. But I graduated, and, and it was one of those things where, yeah, I was storm chasing, but being, you know, what was I, probably 21, 22 years old, looking for a job, you know, and the the storm chasing was a hobby. And then when did you 
decide to say, you know what, I'm going to pursue this and this is going to be, this is going to be my dream is to, to do weather and, and to, to chase storms. I think that kind of happened over time because, you know, between 2013 and basically uh, maybe I would put it even so 2018. So last year in that time frame, I was okay keeping weather as a hobby. And, you know, we have this page, Wisconsin Weather on Facebook, and I have the website, WisconsinWX.com. But, you know, I've always taken it very seriously. And it was always like this thing that I just kind of did for fun. Um, If I had to point to one moment in time that I always go back to, it would have been actually at my commencement, listening to the speaker come up on stage going, you guys got to pursue something in life, go after it. You know, I'm kind of spiritual in a way, and I, I kind of tune into things, and I heard you know, the key message was Wisconsin weather. But I never really got to the point where I was like, I need to pursue this as a life or a career until recently. By you doing that, I'm sure you're, you're able to benefit people now throughout the state with your knowledge and with what's going on, and you'll be able to help people kind of understand weather a little bit better and 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 that's got that's got to be a fun fun challenge for you as well yeah yeah you know i mean really the nuts and bolts of the whole thing is you know pursuing your passion really that's the theme and i think that anybody can connect with that i think everybody has something that they're meant to do or they're passionate about and you know they they feel this magnetic energy like they're drawn to it and, but a lot of people don't know how to get there. What I'm trying to do is trying to show people, in addition to providing, you know, information like weather and, you know, when to take shelter, uh, that and the other thing, is is also like helping others connect with their passion. So if I, if anything, I can also serve as a, you know, hey, guys, look, here's how I did it. Here's, you know, how you can do it, too. You know, everybody has a passion or an interest. Like, go after it. Pursue it because life is so short. That's where I'm at, I guess, in my life now. Your story, I, I can relate to that, and I'm sure others can relate to that too, or or at least they're they're thinking about, they've got that idea in their head like you did of, I, I, I've got this and I need to do something, and, and maybe this is, maybe just listening to you is going to help them push forward too. So th- so that's really cool. I'm glad you, you shared that story yeah. with us. We all know, you know, that whole Tornado Alley area is really busy for storm chasing, you know, Wisconsin's got its own unique weather habits here. Obviously, we've got, you know, winter and all that. But sure. um, what, what in your opinion, makes Wisconsin a great place for storm chasing? I think a big key is that we have four seasons that, you know, you can get extreme weather in every season, um, and it changes. So it's not always the same thing uh, here in Wisconsin. It's more challenging, you know, um, I think personally what I'm drawn to is the challenge. I don't know why. I, maybe I'm, you know, I happen to be a little bit stubborn and I, I kind of like go toward the hard route as opposed to the easy route. But, but I think, yeah, I think it, the, the rewards are so much greater here, I feel like. Um, and again, everybody's different. You know, there's no, um, I personally, I've never actually chased in Oklahoma. I've never chased in Kansas or even Nebraska. Um, or Missouri, anything. I've always tried to stay around Wisconsin. And the reason being is, yeah, we get fewer storms of high, of big magnitude, severe weather, super cell thunderstorms. But, but when you do get them, it's such a sweet reward. And um, you know, there's there's always this talk about chaser convergence. And you know, what's the value in having you know experienced a storm that? a thousand other people have seen and photographed and videotaped and all that stuff. Like what value is there in that um, is the question I always get when I, when I think about chasing the planes, because there's hundreds and hundreds of people out there doing the same thing you are. Where in Wisconsin, people tend to overlook it because like I said, the storms are less frequent and harder to find. And when you find them, there's only a handful of people around. If any, you know, it's pretty much you in the storm um, and it's just a sweet experience. It's, I think it's just a very rewarding experience. Yeah. And, and I think that you, you hit on a point there too, where, you know, there's a lot we can learn about our storms here. So why not get as much information and much data out of those storms as we can so that we can relate to those storms when they do happen again, or, or you know, when they reoccur, I, yeah, I think yeah. there's a lot, lot, lot to that. I think the value to having people like storm chasers like me, in Wisconsin is that you specialize on Wisconsin storms, which are different from anywhere else. And I think the difference is, you know, the boundaries, the different microclimates that collide and things like there's a different character here. There's value in understanding that. And I think we under appreciate those 
storm chasers who understand that. And I think, you know, as part of the things we're doing with with Wisconsin Weather, WisconsinWX.com, is we have, um, we've taken our experience of 10 years on storm chasing Wisconsin specifically and applied it and provide visual, you know, maps and forecasts for Wisconsin. Now, you know, that's really the key point here. And, and one of the ways that, you know, Wisconsin weather and, and then storm chasers can contribute is to, to understand that their experience has value to the, to the general population, the three plus million people who live in Wisconsin, you know, that that's your contribution. So if you're looking for a way to use your passion for weather in a productive way that, that revolves around storm chasing, just know that you ha- you have value. That brings up a, a question that I have then, because in, in, we mentioned it before we started the interview about um, the difference between a storm spotter and a storm chaser. Um, I, I know they always yeah. talk about classes you can go for spotting storms, but first off, what what is the difference? And then is there some sort of certification that to be a storm chaser, or is this just something somebody does on their own? Okay, that's a great question. So the reason there, the reason I say there's a difference between storm chasing and storm spotting, there's multiple reasons. One of them is, here's a story. So a lot of the time when I'm storm chasing, I'll be out there and I'll run into people all the time and say, oh, you know, you know, you're a storm chaser. My, you know, my aunt or my uncle or my sister, or my brother, or my kid is a storm chaser. And I go, are you sure they're a storm chaser? Like, you know, because I'm kind of crazy, you know, like. I'll uh, I'll get jump in my car and jump you know from from Oshkosh I'll drive to Eau Claire in the afternoon and back, you know drive for nine straight hours with no problem. Are you sure your kid does that? Like no, and we'll go through this process of oh well they went to the meeting and I'm going okay so you went to they went to the storm spotter meetings which I guess is a storm spotter so nine eighty percent of the time people are storm spotters which means in my opinion, and there's diff- there's no clear definition, but the way I view it as a storm chaser is a storm spotter typically will kind of, as a storm comes in, they will kind of just go out. You know, this includes firefighters, you know, police officers, general public. They'll, they'll go to a, like a stationary spot in their county and they'll wait for the storm to hit them and they'll report what's happening. And they do a great job. And the National Weather Service does storm spotter meetings for this and they're free of charge. There's no, there's no certification involved. There's no, like, they're not going to give you, like, hey, you passed this course, like, congratulations, here's this piece of paper or anything. They're just going to say, hey, welcome, you know, and then, okay, if you have any questions, you can reach out kind of thing and, and bye. Whereas this is in contrast to storm chasers. Now, chasers will drive all the way across the state, like I mentioned earlier, just to see the storm. And in storm chasing, you can spot storms. So the, the, the classes that they have, the National Weather Service, like I mentioned earlier, Storm chasers also go to those, and they can also report severe weather at any time. But the motivation is different, okay? So there's more of a volunteer protecting the community focus with storm spotting. With storm chasing, it's more of an individual hobby most of the time. So you're you're going out there on your own accord and trying to find something. You know, for me, it's it's almost like the whole experience draws me in, and I'm good with anything that happens. But, um, you know... a guy who's storm chasing has to predict the weather. They have to they have to be experienced enough to to know how to stay safe um, in that situation when they do find a severe weather. You know, so it's a little bit different. Whereas the storm spotters sort of like, I'm here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to report this, and um, I'm going to protect the community and stuff. So there's a different motivation, and I think that the skill set is different for a storm chaser. So I like to separate them out because of the motivation. That's great. I'm glad you you made that distinction um, because. The other question I had for you it was about some of the equipment maybe that you're using because, you know, with smartphones now, yeah. we've all got our own radar in our hand. And yep. does the radar uh, the radar alone doesn't make us qualified to know where the storm is going or what a storm is doing. So what are some of the things that you use when you are chasing that, that help you kind of get in the get in the way of the storm so that you know where it's going to be and, you know, where to chase? So I use a variety of equipment. What it really starts with is the preparation. I think that storm chasing is like 100% mental. <laughs> you know, it's you, you're you're timing an accident basically. You know, yeah. a, a meteorological accident is sometimes what these supercell thunderstorms are. But um, I start with the forecast, and and that's really where Wisconsin weather comes from is the forecast. We're we're making these anyways. You know, we have to figure out where am I going to be to be in the best position for this storm. And so you go through this process of watching the models and everything. You make a forecast. So that's where it starts. So the equipment that way is 
just having a computer, but you need years and years of experience to know all the tricks and what happens and stuff like that. But once you get to day one, so let's say it's Saturday, boom, here comes the storm. It's going to be this afternoon. Where do we go? You use your forecast, you stick to the plan, you know, and, and the reason I say that is because if you're wrong, you'll learn for next time. If you're right, you're right where you want to be. But on day one, you use you basically use the radar to get to where you're going. There's also tools. There's a lot of tools I use. Um, software. For one thing, I, I use the, the current conditions a lot. So I think it's called the, the mesoscale analysis is what we call it. And basically, it's got all these parameters for severe thunderstorm strength and stuff like that. And you kind of zero in on an area if it agrees with your forecast and all that stuff. So you, you end up there, and then it's radar. Um, you know, where is the storm forming? Has it formed yet? Where is it going? And that's how you fine tune. So you go through this process of, okay, so four days away, it would have been anywhere in Wisconsin. Okay. I know that I'm on Saturday, I'm going, I'm going to be chasing Wisconsin. Then by the day one, you kind of know, okay, is it all clear or is it Wisconsin Dells? And then by the time you get to noon on Saturday, when your storm chase is happening, it's like, okay, I definitely know it's all clear because I see the storm forming to the West or South. I'm going there. Um, and then from there, once the storm, you get to the storm, you use your eyes and you make sure you're situationally aware. Now, everybody's different this way because I, I've chased a lot of people who are very into the radar. What's the radar doing? I got to see the rotation and I got to see the reflectivity of everything going on. I like to use my eyes, but maybe that's because I'm experienced. I've been doing this for 10 years. But, you know, how's the storm look? Where's the storm base? Where's the, where's the core located? Where's the hail core? Where's the roof link downdraft? You know, so... All these features I try to identify, and then I, I kind of use my eyes once the storm has formed and I've met there and I've intercepted it. And then I take it through, you know, its its process. Now, I, I use, because my mission has been more focused on video documentation of the storm, because I wanted to show everybody in Wisconsin what these storms really look like, you know. I don't really have a scientific emphasis or a scientific mission that way, so I don't have any of that equipment. You know, I'll have like a, a dedicated 4K camera, I'll have a GoPro on the roof, I'll have a, a dash cam, I'll have my cell phone, and all these things that I take with me, and I try to get these unique angles of the storm as it happens, and I take it through, so let's say the storm forms at noon, and I get on it at 1, from 1 to 7, I'll follow along with it, or I'll jump to another storm, or as the things change and evolve, I'll kind of flow with the storm, and you know, you get this whole, from 1 to 7, you get this whole array, a whole life cycle of a storm on camera and then you can kind of share that with everybody so that's sort of how i approach the chase day and then you know after the chase day you have to work through all this information all this video and photography and share it and um, that's one of the areas that we're working on at wisconsin weather specifically is how do we do this in a way that people appreciate understand and learn from it so when do you know when it's time to get out of the way of the storm that's a really good question I think it comes down to listening to your gut feeling, listening to what your body's telling you. When you there's a thing called situational awareness, and you know what it is, like being aware of everything that's going on around you. When you lose that and you feel uncomfortable, it's time to get out. And um, you know, there's other situations like you you really shouldn't put yourself in the path of a tornado. You know, so you're going to be tracking the rotation of the storm, uh, where that tornado would form if there were one where is it going and trying to stay out of that path. Um, you know, when you go to the storm spotter meetings, they'll tell you, you know, the best viewing angle is probably from the Southwest or sorry, from the Southeast on most storms, because you're in the warm inflow region and there's nothing really reaching out there to slap you, you know, to hit you like a, you know, and whereas if you were in the forward flank downdraft, you'd just begin hit by hail and not have no visibility. And so, just listening to your body and and listening to kind of that sixth sense that you have or extra, you know, because there's a lot of science involved with meteorology, but you need to keep bearings on your, your inner feelings. So I got to ask just because just because it's me, I'm, I, I was a big fan of the movie Twister and I got to ask about when they say it's going green, does that mean it's, <laughs> it's prime for tornadoes? When the sky starts turning that greenish color. Yeah, so I, I see it from both ways. Like, There's a lot of very good stuff in there, and there's a lot of stuff that isn't totally accurate. <clears throat> but it makes for a good movie. Sure. I would say going green in Twister, uh, I think that they're probably referring to the core of a storm when it's the storm 
hits a, another level of intensity, and you can kind of see as it comes towards you a green core, a greenish tint to the storm. Oftentimes, that is a, a marker of a severe thunderstorm. Um, there are other signs of intensification and things like that that we look at that are probably a little bit better than that. Oh, for example, you know, uh, lightning is a big thing for us. Like, if we note that the storm is displaying a high level of lightning hitting the ground, we call them CG bolts, ahead of, you know, or it's having a burst or a lack thereof, we can kind of um, anticipate the intensity in, in some of the moves we're going to make while we're chasing. So, yeah, going green, I would, I'd never use that, but I will note in videos and stuff like that, like, oh, there's a greenish corn. This is it's probably a pretty bad storm, but, yeah. So staying along those lines, I've heard people say that they, they heard, like, a, it sounds like a train when a tornado goes through. Is that Have you experienced that? So I've chased a lot of storms. I've only seen a few tornadoes, and, but I can relate to that, and I, I know it's real. I know that's a real thing. I think what you're hearing is the rush of wind, maybe even the rush of rain. Um, yeah, so that's a real deal. Uh, but I would say, like, the one situation where I did hear that, being close enough would have been the Rochelle uh, EF4 tornado that I saw in 2015, where... You know, you just you're enveloped in this vortex of just wind and rain and stuff, and it's like, yeah, it sounds like it's like sitting in a waterfall a little bit, you know, and it this kind of you can hear the power of nature. That yeah, way. yeah. What tips would you give somebody who's thinking about getting into storm chasing? You know, how long do you plan on doing this? Is this like something you just plan to do this afternoon once and then be on with your life, or? You know, do you really want to do this for the rest of your life? Because that'll kind of give you different trajectories. Let's just assume that, yeah, you know, this might be something that I do for the rest of my life, okay? What I would start doing is watching YouTube videos. I would get all, study all the dynamics of severe weather, supercell thunderstorms, the different thunderstorm types, what causes them, the parameters involved. Um, when they, like oh, everything, just, just understand it from top to bottom, even before you, you chase a storm is your best bet to stay safe because these storms are, can be unpredictable. And, you know, even the most experienced people, they, they're going to be surprised from time to time. So you need to do your research really ahead of time, go to the storm spotter meetings, uh, you know, it won't hurt for sure. It's definitely going to give you useful information. When I went to my first one or two, I learned something. I always learned something. So you know, reach out to somebody who does it already, who's already a storm chaser. Say, hey, you know, would you be willing to take me along with you? Or can you give me some help pointers? Like, what do I look for? What should I target? Just kind of start having conversations with people who are already storm chasers because they will let you know, you know, the ins and outs, so to speak. You know, I wouldn't expect them to tell you everything, but they're going to kind of nudge you in a certain direction to say, okay, yes, look at this or no, this is kind of not a big deal at all. So. That's where I would start, you know, our page, WisconsinWX.com. We do have some resources and information there, um, but, you know, we're all storm chasers. You know, our page on Facebook and web, uh, you know, is, you know, we're always, our guys are all storm chasers, so we're, we're a helpful resource, not guaranteed that you get a timely answer because, you know, we're all got to personalize and stuff like that, but we love to help. On our on our group, We're call, it's called the Wisconsin Weather Nation, you're more likely to, to find an answer, a personal response that way, you know. So if you're a storm chaser looking to get involved, check out those sources. But, yeah, I, I mean, I, I want to encourage it. Um, I think that it's storm chasing has been given kind of a bad image, but you got to check your own moral compass and, you know, kind of understand why you're in it and just, you know, own it. When you wake up in the morning, you check the weather, what puts a smile on your face and what gets that adrenaline going that you know you got potential for a good chase coming up? That's a good question. I think what fires me up is just to see agreement within the models. And you almost get this, like I always refer to it, your inner bearings, your your sixth sense, what your gut is telling you. You're going to get signs. Like I personally, I get, I'll get a feeling like, hey, like something's going to happen today. I need to tune into this. Like just go, you know, and um, when I get that feeling, I know. I've chased uh, over 250 storms uh, in Wisconsin, and I would say maybe one or two of them I got that feeling of, like, this is big deal stuff. Like, I don't know if it's the same for everybody. Like I say, I'm in tune with kind of my sixth sense spiritual end of things, and I had it ahead of time with the Rochelle EF4 tornado. I said to myself, and on camera I said, 
something's going to happen today. I can feel it. And then with the Shitek EF3 tornado in 2017, I felt the same feeling that morning. So when you get that feeling, tune into it and own it and, and listen to yourself because um, you trust yourself because your body's going to tell you things that you couldn't know otherwise. Any type of weather that's interesting, I will go for, you know, and, and I just get excited to be out there. You've given us a lot of great information, and it sounds like you 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 really enjoy what you're doing. I can't let you go without asking you, what has been your favorite moment in storm chasing so far? The moment that I always go back to would be the storm that I chased in Illinois uh, that produced the EF4 tornado in Rochelle, Illinois. Um, or not in that city, but it, it did later on. To be part of the whole experience to go down there and see the storm develop on radar, just blow up, um, and then get to the storm right at the very moment it starts to produce the tornado. And that tornado going on to produce, you know, it's an infamous tornado. Just being at the right place at the right time and witnessing it with your own eyes, that was that was really important to me. And I think the experience there, you, you get these messages that hit you like, you know, what do you want out of this? And in that moment, you know, I was like, okay, I want to take my camera and zoom right into where the tornado is hitting the ground and film the detail that's going on there. So it's just a very unique experience. And you look back down the road and you see the tornado crossing the road, the power flash is going going off. And this is beefy, meaty, funnel tornado hitting the ground. And watching as this massive tornado just continues on down the landscape and being in that moment, um, that was really powerful. But in that moment, what I realized is your body kind of goes into a shock. It's like a blend or between imagination and reality, and your brain comes up with explanations for things that couldn't possibly be happening, but they really are. Like in that moment when, with the Rochelle tornado, it's like I saw it going away with this wedge tornado. So you go into a shock a little bit, and it paralyzes you. So what I learned from that is, you know, you have to realize when you're in danger. And I think instinct, a lot of that stuff takes over. So there's a lot of great experiences, but that was the one that really kind of leads me on to where we are today. Justin, thanks for coming on the podcast. What are some of the ways people can reach out to you and maybe learn more? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on the podcast. You can learn more from going to wisconsinwx.com. We have a bunch of information there. There's a tab, I think it's called resources and links and stuff, and you can kind of explore our website. Uh, We have a Facebook page, Wisconsin Weather, uh, where we do a lot of our forecasting and public information that we we push out. And these are, we're in a summer mode right now um, where we're kind of sharing photography and storm chasing video live and kind of that way. But in winter, it would be more under the forecasting side of things. And then you can go, if you're into storm chasing or just kind of want to see more, our group called Wisconsin Weather Nation on Facebook you can uh, interact with us personally and and we'll, you know, we'll fire back and forth and talk about things. And that's kind of a cool thing. If you're, if you're just looking to get into storm chasing, you kind of want to make this a a life goal. Like I would definitely go there. That's how you can reach out to us. And uh, yeah, really thanks for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. And, you know, if you're really into adventure, you know, and exploring Wisconsin, storm chasing is a great thing to do because you're going to see cities and towns you've never seen before you wouldn't have, you know, no reason to ever be there, but because the weather and nature, you know, led you through this path, you get to see it. And that's one of the things I enjoy the most. That's great. Thanks again, Justin. And uh, I'll put links to all those the sites and stuff that you talked about in the show notes so that uh, people can reach out to you as well. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you very much. I want to thank Justin again for joining me on the podcast. It is such a fascinating subject to talk about, in my opinion. I just, I just love storms and what they can produce and how they can change. I mean, obviously safety is the number one thing and you should always be safe if you're going to go out and try to do this. But if you want more information about being a storm chaser and how to get into it, you know, feel free to reach out to Justin. He's, he's willing to help you out. He, you know, like he said, the more people you can get out there doing this, the more information we can gather, the more we're going to learn from these storms. So reach out to him. I'll leave links to his web page, his Facebook page, even his Facebook group here in the show notes. And it's just, it's a fascinating subject. I just, I just love it. It was, it was such a treat to talk to him and I'm so glad he took the time to, to come on the podcast. And if you plan on going out there and doing some storm chasing as one of Wisconsin's outdoor explorers, please be careful, use caution. And if you're not sure, don't get close. Okay. So just please be careful. That's all I want to say is be careful 
and, and don't get yourself into a bad situation. I hope you enjoyed the podcast as much as I enjoyed talking to Justin, and I hope you're having a great 4th of July week as one of Wisconsin's outdoor explorers. Thanks for joining me again. I'm your host, Jason, and I will talk to you again next week. Thanks for listening to the Wisconsin's Outdoor Explorer podcast. For more great information about being an outdoor explorer, visit our website at wisconsinsoutdoorexplorer.com. Be sure to check out the blog page and follow us on social media. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts.